the planning board is now in session for Thursday, uh, February 4th, 2021. In an abundance of caution resulting from the global spread of the COVID-19 virus, the planning board continues to host virtual hearings, and today marks the 37th virtual meeting since March of 2020. During these continued challenging times, we remain committed to promoting a safe and healthy environment for our public, applicants, stakeholders, and staff as we continue business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of the participation guidelines. Speaker pre-registration and pre-submission of comments and exhibits is required. All participants must pre-register and all materials or exhibits, if any, must be submitted by 12 noon on the Tuesday before the planning board meeting as shown on the screen, as announced in weekly meetings, as posted on our website, and as clearly stated in bold red on our published weekly planning board agendas. Registered speakers and presenters may join the meeting with the link provided via email from the planning board office. Online, registered participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software in order to participate. Registered speakers may also listen or participate in the meeting using a phone line utilizing the call-in number provided via email. We ask all participants to mute your phones when not speaking, and please do not put your phone on hold. To eliminate audio feedback, only one connected device with sound should be in the room at the same time. And of course, the public may continue to watch planning board meetings streamed live, or if you wish to become a person of record, you may sign up on our online web form. Please note the screen for instructions. Thank you. As always, we commence our meetings with a moment of silence to honor those individuals and loved ones throughout our community and nation who passed away since our last meeting of January 28th. We, we want to remember the ever-growing number of victims of the widespread coronavirus. Um, in the United States alone, we're coming up on 27 million confirmed cases. 27 million confirmed cases and over 457,000 deaths. Um, this is really tragic and the numbers keep growing, keep growing and we have new strains now which are far more contagious. So please everyone be careful. Um, and we want to remember all of these persons who succumbed to the coronavirus um, and their families and loved ones. These are, these are aunts, uncles, moms, grandparents, dads, you know, siblings, children, you know, fam loved ones. Um, we want to remember Grant Jackson, the Major League Baseball All-Star pitcher for several teams who pitched for the 1979 World Series winning Pittsburgh Pirates who died from complications of COVID. In our commission family, we want to keep um, Jackie Woody in our prayers. Jackie um, worked with us during the census. She was a longtime county employee before coming to Park and Planning Commission. Um, she just lost her baby sister, uh, Diane Brown, this week. And we want to remember Jackie and her family in our prayers as well. In the D.C. metro area, we want to remember Greta Cruz. Many of us had the pleasure of meeting Greta Cruz. I know she interviewed me many times. Um, a former TV news anchor and reporter who anchored ABC 7's Good Morning Washington for seven years, and she pa passed away after a valiant eight-year struggle with lung cancer. John Moylan, age 88, who served as the principal at DeMatha Catholic High School for 33 years. We want to remember their families as well. Throughout the nation, the incomparable, legendary actress, fashion model, activist, Cicely Tyson, age 96, known for so many things, but her critically acclaimed film roles in Sounder, the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, and her recent TV appearances on How to Get Away with Murder. She was the recipient of three Primetime Emmy Awards, one Tony Award, and an Honorary Academy Award. And her memoir, Just As I Am, was published on January 26, just two days prior to her death, and I guarantee you, I tried. It's already sold out on Amazon. Um, she was also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. John Cheney, age 89, National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame and former Temple University coach. He led Temple to 17 NCAA tournaments, appear, uh, uh, tournament appearances during his 24 seasons. 
Dustin Diamond, TV star known for his role as Screech in Saved by the Bell. He acted in other films too, but could never shake that um, chic persona. But many, many of you, particularly younger folks, grew up on Screech. Um, Hal Holbrook, age 95, actor who portrayed Mark Twain in a one-man show for six decades and who played Deep Throat in the film All the President's Men. He was also uh, married to um, Dixie Carter, who starred in um, Designing Women. Duke Booty, who was the hip-hop producer and writer best known for his single, The Message, produced by Sugar Hill Records. Andrew Brooks, research professor at Rutgers University, who developed the first FDA-approved rapid saliva test for COVID. Joseph Sonnabend, pioneering AIDS physician. Harry Beale, age 90, U.S. Navy veteran. In 1962, he was the first to volunteer when the Navy SEAL team was established. Jeanette Moss, actress and producer who recently played in Charm City Kings. Sophie, age, 20, age 34, Grammy Award nominated experimental pop artist and producer. Grady Gaines, age 86, amazing saxophonist with Little Richard, Sam Cooke, James Brown, and Curtis Mayfield. And Jamie Tarses, the first woman to oversee programming uh, at a major um, network. We want to remember her as well. Um, she was she shepherded such um, NBC comedies such as Friends and Frasier to primetime success. Um, and of course, I may have missed some, so we extend our deepest sympathy to any of you who may have suffered the loss of a loved one, and we extend our hearts and condolences to you. If we may have that moment of silence, please. Thank you. We have now transitioned to the month of February. It is, of course, Black History Month, and there will be more on that uh, momentarily. Um, it is also American Heart Month. Take care of your heart. It's important. Take care of it in terms of what you eat and your health and, and, and protect it um, emotionally as well. It is also an Affair to Remember Month. And let's be clear, we're talking about the movie, the movie. Um, it's, it was just an amazing movie. It's a tear. It's a beautiful movie and a tearjerker. So I invite everyone to watch it at some point during this month. An affair to remember. It is also National Teen Dating and Violence Awareness Month. Teen dating violence has increased tremendously over the years. And parents with teens, please talk to your children because they don't always tell you. When you interview children, when you interview teens. Um, they will tell you that they, that they have been subjected to some form of date violence. When you ch check with their parents, parents will say, oh, no, my, my teen has never been subjected to something like that. So there is a disconnect. So please find a way to reach out to your um, children. It is also National Therapeutic Recreation Month. Um, so February 2nd to February 8th, so listen up, because we know Valentine's Day is, is next week. So February 2nd to the 8th is Dump Your Significant Jerk Week. So if you got a clean house, you need a clean house. It is always the week before Valentine's Day so that you're ready for Valentine's Day. On February 4th, 1789, it was the first U.S. Electoral College, and they selected George Washington as president. 1913, February 4th, civil rights activist Rosa Parks, was born in Tuskegee, Alabama, dubbed the first lady of civil rights and the mother of the freedom movement. She is best known for her pivotal role in the more than year long successful Montgomery bus boycott, ultimately resulting in the um, federal court's decision that bus segregation was unconstitutional under the equal protection clause of the, United, of the 14th amendment. We want to remember Rosa Parks. 1952, Jackie Robinson, number 42, famous Major League Baseball player who integrated the Dodgers. He became the first African-American executive of a major TV station at WNBC New York. 1971, NASDAQ, the second largest stock exchange in the world, was founded. 1977 saw the release of Rumors, the Rumors album by Free... 
Fleetwood Mac. It was their 11th album, widely considered their best. It was rated as the seventh greatest album of all time by Rolling Stone magazine, all time. 1999, sadly, very sadly and tragically, 22 years ago today, a young 23 year old unarmed Amadou Diallo was shot dead by four New York City police who mistakenly thought he matched a general description of a rapist from the year before. They were most definitely mistaken. However, fired 41 shots and killed him. And by the way, all four were sub subsequently acquitted. Let that sink in for a moment. And finally, on this day, February 4, 2004, a 19 year old student named Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook from his Harvard dorm room. Other announcements. As I said, it is Black History Month and the Park and Planning, specifically the Department of Parks and Recreation kicked off festivities this past Sunday with the virtual opening celebration and we unveiled the 2021 commemorative poster depicted here. The theme is Black Health Matters an undoctored history of healthcare and healing traditions in the black community. There are fabulous virtual activities, events, and programs planned for the entire month. African-American aviators, healthy soul food cooking, healthcare panel, music and dance performances, Negro League Baseball, Step Africa, and She the People. You can peruse these events on the virtual calendar. Just visit blackhistory.pgparks.com to view, and you can download the files and mark your calendars. It's fabulous, we invite you to attend. And you don't have to attend on the actual day since it's preserved, um, you can go look at these things anytime. Finally, the cultural arts study. Join the planning department, Department of Parks and Recreation and the Prince George's Arts and Humanities Council for a virtual community meeting to discuss the role of arts in creative placemaking, Thursday, February 18th at 7 p.m. It's part of the Prince George's Cultural Arts Study, and you can learn how arts and culture can be used in creative placemaking to improve the quality of life, of life and create a distinct sense of place in our communities. Please register by noon on, fe on February 17th and see the slide for the, registration, the registration list. Um, as always, we thank you and appreciate your flexibility, cooperation, and support as we continue to keep our planning functions moving forward in a safe fashion during our no longer new normal. Please remain thankful for our blessings and we ask that you make every effort to be kind, to stay safe, to mask up, to look out for one another, to stay strong, stay resilient, and always remain ever hopeful as we continue striving to get through all of these challenging times together. Thank you. Um, I will see that we have our full planning board compliment. Oh, and finally, one other really important thing. Can we say happy birthday to Commissioner Guana? It's a little bit early, but it's between this week and next week and our next planning board hearing. And Commissioner Dorner, um, I won't disclose too much, but he is the baby of our planning board. And we do extend a tremendous birthday wishes to him. Uh, he's just been an, a, a phenomenal um, member of our planning board. And there he is. And he, you know, I think he always wanted to be a police officer. But anyway, so there he is. I have to confess that that is a Halloween picture. <laughs> but he does look really cool, doesn't he? And of course, on the on the left is the picture from his baby shower um, uh, upon the impending our, um, birth of his baby daughter, Marianne. So happy birthday. Can we, can we turn the speakers on for a second? All the speakers on. Are they on? People, all right. So can we, and, uh, come on, um, Council Warner and Mr. Hunt. So can we all say happy birthday, Commissioner Donner? Happy, 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 happy birthday, Commissioner Donner. You're looking good last month. Anymore. <laughs> you look good last month. Many more. And many more. OK. Thank you. Thank you. So we, um, so we have been um, joined. Now we have our full complement. I'm going to do a roll call. We have Vice Chair Bailey. 
Present. Uh, Commissioner Washington? Present. Commissioner Geraldo? Present. Commissioner Birthday Boy Dorner? I'm here, thank you. Wonderful. We have our, um, uh, um, a plan, uh, let's see, we have our technical hearing writer here today. Um, Ms. Kratka, we have Kenny Flanagan, our senior um, planner over here working all the PowerPoints. We have Ryan Cron, our visual media specialist working everything and troubleshooting. And on the screen, we have our chief um, of development review, James Hunt, and we have our principal counsel, David Warner. So we are ready to go. First item on the agenda is the draft minutes of, of January 28th. Is there a motion? Approval, Madam Chair. I second. Okay. <laughs> okay, motion by motion by Vice Chair Bailey and seconded by Commissioner Washington. Vice Chair Bailey? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Um, we have next, we have the eyes have it 5 0. Next, we have items 4A and 4B, which are the consent agenda. Is anyone here to oppose the items and recommendations in items 4A or 4B? or any uh, staff member who wishes to discuss? If not, is there a motion? Move approval to Madam Chair of items for A and for B in accordance with the uh, with their recommendation of staff. Second. We have a, we have a motion by Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Bailey and seconded by Commissioner Washington. Vice Chair Bailey? But aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. The ayes have it 5-0, thank you. Item next on the list is item 4D. Um, item 4D is a basic plan amendment um, that we have the staff recommendation um, before us. Mr. Spradley is here. My question is, um, is there any requ um, request on the part of the planning board to hear? We have no other request. Otherwise we can transmit to the council. Is there any request to hear? Seeing none, the report will be transmitted to the, to the council. Thank you. Next item is item eight, which is preliminary plan of subdivision 4-17014, Lesby's Lane. Mr. Heath, are you on? Yes, you are. Okay. Mr. Tedesco. Mr. Tedesco. Good morning, Madam Chair, I am on. Wonderful. Mr. Lenhart. Good morning. I'm here. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Tedesco, I'm going through your list here. <laughs> Cheryl Fischel. Fisher? Fischel. I'm sorry. Sharon? I don't believe she's on this particular matter. That may be uh, an error. Okay, no worries. Mr. Rizzi? Good morning. Present. Good morning. Okay, that's what I like. Okay. Mr. White, are you on? Good morning, or Mr. Vincent, you got it covered. Anthony White. Good morning. Here. Wonderful. Okay. Um, Lion, um, Diab, did I pronounce it correctly? Probably not. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes, you did. Good morning. I'm present. Thank you. And Isam Diab. Yes, that was perfect. Alive, kicking, and present. That's we're glad to hear all of the above. Okay. <laughs> and then we also have applicants exhibit number one, which is revised condition. Mr. Heath, you are on. All right. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. For the record, I'm Antoine Heath with the subdivision. Eight is the preliminary plan of subdivision for Lesby's Lane 4 17014. The subject property consists of one partial parcel, which is to be subdivided into 29 lots and five parcels for the development of 29 single family detached dwellings on 32.13 acres. Next slide, please. The site is located in Southern Prince George's County within planning area 85A and council district nine. Next slide, please. Typically, the site is located on the west side of Lesby's Lane, approximately 950 feet south of its intersection with Lesby's Turn. Next slide, please. The subject site is located in the RR Rural Residential Zone and it's surrounded by properties who share the same zone. 
The reserve, op the reserve open space zone can be seen to the east. Next slide, please. The subject site is also located within the military installation overlay zone for noise. Next slide, please. This aerial photograph shows the site in its current condition, which consists of primarily wooded area. The abutting and adjacent properties, which are both wooded and residential, can also be seen. Pepco utilities abut the property to the east. Next slide, please. This map shows the topography of the site, which slopes gradually toward the west. Next slide, please. This master plan right of way map shows the master plan collector road, Shady Oak Parkway, known as C 517, which crosses over the southern portion of the site. Next slide, please. Targeted in red is Branch Avenue's intersection with Earnshaw Drive and Birch Hill Road, which is the critical intersection being affected by the subject property. The intersection does not operate at adequate levels, therefore, the applicant will have to provide a fee to the Brandywine Road Club to alleviate this inadequacy. This is discussed on page nine of the staff report. Next slide, please. The preliminary plan shows the northern portion of the proposed subdivision. Lots and parcels are outlined in red and the proposed right of way are highlighted in blue. The site is accessed from Lesby's Lane, which can be seen in the top right corner of the slide. Next slide, please. This slide depicts the southern portion of the subdivision. As discussed earlier, the master plan collector road, Shady Oak Parkway, labeled C-517, can be seen highlighted in darker blue. Adequate public facilities, including water and sewer facilities and fire and rescue are available to serve the subject site. Police emergency response time standards were not met for the subject property. However, mitigation will not be required as the county's capital improvement plan includes funding for the construction and relocation of the existing police district five station. Next slide, please. This slide shows the proposed sidewalks of the subdivision, which are highlighted in blue and flank the proposed rights of way. Next slide, please. This slide, the sidewalks continue throughout the remainder of the subdivision and stop at the end of the proposed road. Next slide, please. The applicant has requested a variance from section 25-122B1G for the removal of 23 specimen trees X out in red. This variance has been evaluated in accordance with the associated provisions of approval detailed on page 18 of the staff report and staff recommends approval. Environmental regulated features known as primary management area are highlighted in pink and the Woodland Preservation Area is highlighted in green. Next slide, please. There are two proposed impacts to the primary management area outlined in yellow. Next slide, please. This is a closer look at the two proposed impacts to the PMA. The first impact is the result of connecting to the existing sewer line on the western side of the property. Staff finds that this impact to the primary management area has been minimized to the greatest extent possible and approval of this impact is recommended. The second impact shown on the bottom left would occur if the master plan road Shady Oak Parkway is ever constructed. Staff does not recommend approval of this impact as the impact plates and tree conservation plan do not have enough detailed information for staff to recommend approval. Next slide, please. For informational purposes, the applicant has opted to use a separate parcel of land not included in the subdivision to count towards their off-site woodland conservation requirement. This parcel is outlined in green. Next slide, please. This is a more detailed look at that parcel. The primary management areas are highlighted in pink and the woodland preservation area is highlighted in green. Staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings and approve preliminary plan of subdivision 4-17014 and variance from section 25-122B1G subject to the 16 conditions in the staff report. The applicant has proposed a revision to one of these conditions and staff is in agreement with this revision. 
This concludes staff presentation. Thank you, Mr. Heath. Let's see if there are any questions. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions, thank you. Um, Commissioner Dorner? Uh, just one question, and, and this is probably gonna come up in the applicant exhibit um, that, that they're gonna be looking at or admitting later on. Um, have we received any any kind of um, correspondence back from the county regarding C C five seventeen, or is it still kind of as it stands in the staff report where they haven't replied to anything? Uh, we're still uh, as it stands in the staff report. We haven't received anything back from DPI. Uh, uh, SHA did respond, but they weren't uh, willing to do the reservation. DPI did not respond. Okay. All right. Thank you. Was that it for you, um, Commissioner Dorner? Yes, yeah, sir. That, that was it. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Geraldo. No questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Tedesco. Thank you and good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. Um, for the record, Matthew Tedesco, the law firm of Matthew Mihosi here on behalf of the applicant, Tri-State Development LLC, represented this morning by Isan Diab and Lehan Diab. Um, also with me is Chris Rizzi and Anthony White from Bowler Engineering and Mike Lenhart from Lenhart Traffic and Consulting. Um, I'd be remiss if I went on any further without saying happy birthday to uh, Commissioner Dorner. So happy uh, early birthday. And um, maybe we'll say it again next week too, but happy birthday. Um, Madam Chair, we don't really have any more to add to, to what uh, Mr. Heath has represented uh, both here verbally and in the staff report. We are in agreement. We have reviewed the staff report um, and we are in agreement with its recommended findings and conditions with the exception of one minor change to condition 1A that's provided in applicants exhibit one. Um, we would like to, uh, we did work very closely with, with Mr. Heath, as well as your transportation planning section, as well as um, your counsel, uh, Mr. Warner, with respect to that um, C-517 alignment. And we would just want to publicly thank them for their consideration and review of this matter. You may recall that this was continued from December till today um, to accommodate any responses back on the, the requested reservation, which um, one was negative and, not, and the other one was not forthcoming, which um, has been determined to be uh, not requesting the reservation. So with that, we are, like I said, in agreement with the recommendations and I uh, would respectfully request the approval, but we do have the full complement complementation of the team uh, if there are any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tedesco. Um, any questions, Madam Vice Chair? Probably. No questions, thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Thank you. Um, so since the others are here, if they're only for questions and we have none, uh, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve preliminary plan 4-17014 TCP 1-018-2020 and variance to section 25-122B1G along with the conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further amended by applicant exhibit number one. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Washington seconded by Madam Vice Chair. Madam Vice Chair. Aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. I vote aye. The ayes have it 5-0. Our next ca um, case are, uh, is actually two companion cases. Detailed site plan 19056 and departure from sign design standard 710 for the Wawa at Old Branch. Let's do a check. Tara Butler, are you present? Yes, she is. Okay, wonderful. Um, Mr. Haller. Present, Madam Chair. There you are. Okay. Um, sure. Stephanie um, Clevenger. Present. Okay. Uh, Chin made bias. Um, I don't see. Do we have a phone in? No phone numbers? 
Okay, so, all right. Uh, Sylvia Silverman? There she is. Ms. Silverman? Are you unmuting her? You have to unmute from your end, Ms. Silverman. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Ms. Butler, you're on. You, we can't hear you. You have to unmute on your side, I think. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm here sorry. to answer any questions. Okay. But now I'm going to Ms. Butler. Ms. Butler, we cannot hear oh, you. Okay. No. No. Mike shows it being on. Well, I know, but she's it's on on our end, but it's not something's amiss on her end. Um, we can we can um take a pause, Miss Miss Butler. There is a phone in number. Uh, Miss Butler, you're on. Okay, so we're going to take a two minute break and, and give you an opportunity to call in. So we're going to just break for two minutes. Okay. All right. Okay, Ms. Butler. Um, and if we can mute everyone else while Ms. Butler is speaking, that would be helpful because I heard some feedback. Okay, Ms. Butler, no worries. We're starting again. You're good. Okay. I know this is only your second case. Uh-oh. You have to what? You, now you have to unmute again, Ms. Butler. All right. Can, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me start over. Okay. So for the record, my name is Tierra Butler with the Urban Design Section. Uh, the project before you is item number six and seven, uh, detailed site plan DSP-19056 um, and DSDS-710 for Wawa at Old Branch Avenue. Uh, the detailed site plan application is for the development of a 5,600 square foot food and beverage store and gas station. Uh, the companion departure is, um, from the sign standards requests an increase in height and area of the proposed freestanding sign and the area of the building and canopy mounted sign. Um, the applicant has also requested a variance to the requirements of section 27-462B of the zoning ordinance to allow for the um, proposed retaining wall in access of three um, in access of six feet within the front and side yard setbacks. Next slide, please. All right, this site is located in Prince George's County um, planning area 76A and Council District 07 as identified in the peach colored area on the map. Next slide, please. The site is located um, on the southwest of um, MD5 Branch Avenue at the intersection of Beach Road. Uh, the site boundary is shown on this vicinity map um, outlined in red. Next slide, please. Uh, the subject property is zoned commercial office and represented in the light pink area as outlined on the map. Next slide, please. Right. This slide shows that uh, the property is not located in any overlay zone. Next slide, please. All right, this aerial photo shows the existing conditions of the property, which contains a vacant SunTrust Bank building. Uh, the applicant proposes to demolish the existing building and site improvements to construct the proposed gas station and food and beverage store. Next slide, please. All right, the site slopes on the eastern side of the property within the existing vegetation shown um, as shown on the map. Next slide, please. Uh, this site is located um, adjacent to the master plan area, um, arterial MD5, Branch Avenue, um, as shown in red on the map. Next slide, please. Uh, the bird's eye view shows the boundary of the property and the existing development, which is to be raised. Next slide, please. 
uh, this slide, this slide shows the proposed um, gas station with a 5,600 square foot food and beverage store. Uh, the gas station will consist of an eight pump island and a total of 16 um, fueling stations situated parallel to MD5 Branch Avenue. Um, there is um, there will be an enclosed dumpster on the south um, east corner of the site. Access to the site will be from two driveways on Beach Road. Um, no access is proposed from MD5 Branch Avenue. Uh, the proposed um, there, the site proposes 39 parking spaces to include one employee space, uh, two handicap accessible spaces, and a U-shaped bike rack. Um, the loading space is located on the northwest side of the building and faces Beach Road. Um, there are two locations where the applicant is requesting a variance for the retaining wall over six feet high within the front and side um, yard setbacks. Uh, the first location is on the northeast corner where the applicant is requesting a variance of five feet. Uh, the second location is on the north, um, the northern property line abutting Branch Avenue, where a variance of five and a half feet is being requested. Uh, the staff recommends approval of this variance as discussed on pages 10 and 11 of the staff report. Next slide, please. This slide uh, shows the landscape plan. Uh, the applicant is proposing to install a berm and heavy landscaping within the um, island located in the right of way in conformance with section 4.4 C2 of the 2010 Prince George's County Landscape Manual to address the concerns of visibility of the loading space. Next slide, please. This slide shows architectural elevations um, of the proposed 5,600 square foot food and beverage store, which is a single story structure in the middle of the site, uh, the front of the building facing MD5 Branch Avenue, and the side facing Beach Road to include multiple windows and roof features. Uh, the facade of the building will, continue, um, will contain a combined of exterior inhalation finishing systems and a manufactured stone veneer. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, this slide shows the gas station canopy elevations and dumpster enclosure. Uh, the materials for the canopy and enclosure are consistent and include the same metal stone uh, roofing materials um, as the proposed building. Next slide, please. This slide shows signage and details. Um, the proposed, um, the site proposes freestanding canopy mounted and building mounted signs for the food and beverage store and gas station. Uh, there are a total of five signs being proposed. Uh, two signs are being proposed to include one sign over each entrance. Uh, one sign is proposed on the canopy. Two spanner signs are proposed above um, the in pump islands. The applicant is requesting a departure from the sign uh, design standards DSDS-710, um, which recommends approval, which staff recommends approval as discussed on pages 11 and 13 of the staff report. Uh, the applicant is proposing a 20 foot tall freestanding sign um, and requesting a departure of 12 feet in height and 1.65 uh, square feet in area. The applicant is proposing um, a gas pump spanner signs and a departure of 20 square feet as um, requested for the building mounted signs. Next, next slide, please. The remaining slide shows the type two um, tree uh, conservation plan. And with that, Urban, the urban design staff recommends that planning board adopt the findings of this report and improve detailed site plan DSP-19056 and type two tree um, conservation plan TCP2-041-2020 um, Wawide Old Branch Avenue. Um, in, including a variance um, from the, um, the requirements of section 27-462B of the zoning ordinance subject to the conditions found on page 16 and 17 of the staff report. Uh, the urban design staff also recommends the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve the departure of the sign standards DSDS-710 um, to allow an increase in height and area of the proposed freestanding sign and uh, the building and canopy mounted signage as shown on the detailed site plan. Um, and this concludes uh, staff's report. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Let's see if there are any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Commissioner Dwarner. No questions, well done. Uh, Commissioner Geraldo.
Commissioner Geraldo. Good morning. Uh, the only question I have, and I don't know if Ms. Butler, I didn't see any electrical charging stations at the gas station. So maybe that's, uh, unless I missed it. The, the, there are no electrical charging stations. Hi. Okay. So why don't I, why don't no, I try to, excuse me. I'll wait for Mr. I was Allen. just, there was a, there's an issue with some someone's with, having uh, a conversation. Someone's CDR. having a conversation that we can hear. So I'm going to mute everyone else, um, except for Mr. Haller. Mr. Haller, you're next. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Thomas Haller. I'm attorney with offices in Largo, and I'm here today representing uh, the applicant in this uh, in this detailed site plan and DSDS. Um, uh, with me today is Mr. Chinmay Bias and Sylvia Silverman with the engineering firm of CV and, and Associates and Stephanie Clevenger is here as well. They are all on our team and are here to answer any questions. Um, I do want to uh, also uh, give my uh, birthday congratulations to Mr. Dorner. And I do want to note that in that Halloween costume, I was amazed at his guns and I am not talking about his, any firearms. Uh, that, that was... Uh, uh, quite impressive. But anyway, um, moving on to the detailed site okay. plan, uh, I think the, yeah, the, the planning board is, uh, anybody that's familiar with Route 5 is familiar with this site. It, as uh, staff said, there's an abandoned uh, bank on the property that's been there for many years. In fact, the bank was built about 50 years ago um, and has outlived its uh, usefulness. Uh, the property is directly across the street from an automobile dealership that's on the opposite side of Route 5. One thing that's unique about this, anybody that's familiar with this knows that there's a service road that runs along Branch Avenue in that location. Uh, the service road extends across Beach Road and then dead ends in front of this property. Uh, but what that uh, does is it, it creates a larger setback than you would typically have. So this building is about 150 feet back from the travel lanes of, um, of Branch Avenue, meaning the um, the food and beverage store. So, uh, but, the, but the site is uh, a, a uh, in a position where it needs to be redeveloped and this will will provide for a use that will be um, a, a, an upgrade to the existing dilapidated building. Um, with regard to Mr. Geraldo's question, there aren't any um, charging stations that are proposed for the site at this particular time. Um, and um, I don't know that they that Wawa has a plan to add one, but at this per present time, they're not, they're not proposing to, to provide any on site. Um, with regard to the staff's recommendation, we, uh, we agree with the staff report, all the staff's findings and recommendations. We have no modifications to offer to the uh, recommended conditions, and we're here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Haller. Um, any questions, Madam Vice Chair? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. That's a lot of spinach that I eat, Mr. Heller. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Commissioner Geraldo. Well, yes. I want to know is is anyone a Wawa representative here uh, that can address as to why they don't want to consider offering an electrical charging station for cars, especially in view of, uh, for example. General Motors is planning to get rid of all gas fired or carbon uh, vehicles by within 15 or 20 years. So I, I'm not understand the number of electrical car vehicle, electrical vehicles is increasing rapidly. So I want to know from Wawa what's their consideration as to why they wouldn't put one in there. Mr. Haller, um, I don't know who you can designate whomever would answer that question. And it's something for you to consider, but it's also something that we can add if the board is um, amenable to um, as a, a consideration. So that so that so it flags it for you know for just for that purpose for consideration in the future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, and while, while, uh, as well as a lot of the other um, uh, similar types of facilities are certainly looking at this, um, and it's something that is in consideration. I don't know that it needs to be shown on the site plan should they decide to add that in the future, uh, but it is certainly something that, that I know that they it's, it's something that they're looking closely at and something that they would consider doing uh, if the desire and the need is there. 
I agree with you. There is definitely a movement toward electric vehicles. We all know that. Um, and there have been uh, commitments by some of the major manufacturers to go in that direction. And so I think that is something that they would certainly uh, be willing to consider adding uh, as they move forward with this site. So Mr. Haller, do you have any objection um, if the board supports to adding this in not obviously not on the site plan, but in the in the resolution um, as a consideration given the wave or, or the trend that Wawa would consider adding charge or explore um, charging stations in the future? I would, we would have absolutely no uh, issue with that at all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's my Mr. only question. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, okay. So there are no other questions. Um, Mr. Haller, was there anyone you wanted to put on to speak or no? Uh, no, Madam Chair, we're fine. Okay, with that, that concluded the list. Um, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff uh, in addition to including um, a consideration for Wawa to explore adding charging a charging station or sons, plural, <laughs> in the future and approve DSP-19056 and TCP2-041-2020 and variance to section 27-462B along with the uh, associated condition uh, conditions as outlined in staff's report in addition to approving DSDS-710. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington. Second. By, was that um, Madam Vice Chair first? I think. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, seconded by Madam Vice Chair. Uh, Madam Vice Chair. But I. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Vote aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um, and, and thank you, Ms. Butler. Um, at, so the next case is item five, which is detail site plan um, 20029 for Banky Property 711. Um, let me do a, a check, a sign up check. Mr. Bossi. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Okay, Matthew Gordon. Morning. Okay, good morning. Um, we have a number of speakers. Victoria Ballestero. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Michael Caney. Michael Caney. I see you there. Um, we'll come back. Lana Clement. Good. Good morning. Okay, wonderful. Chantel Marino. Chantel Marino. Don't see. Okay, don't see her. Uh, Brianne Wilson. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Heather Miklos. Good morning. Did I pronounce it correctly? Nicholas, yes. Okay, thank you. James Barringer or Jer? James Barringer? Uh, um, uh, yes, I'm here. Good morning. Is it is it Jer or Ger? Jer, Barringer. Barringer, okay, thank you. I had it right. Okay, Andrew. Yes, okay, Andrew Pilat. Uh, I'm here. Good morning. Okay. And Michael. McManamy? McManamy, maybe. Uh, yes, I'm here. Good morning. Thank you. Did you I get that right. one right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, okay, so, okay, wait, I got two more. Um, Successoro Kia, I'm, I'm sure I got that wrong. Tia, Kia? I'm here, yes, thank you. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Yes. Okay, and what about, is it Cicero? Uh, yes, he's here as well. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, so that concludes the sign up list. We also have additional backup. We have applicants exhibit number one, which is the directional sign comparison, and applicants exhibit number two, which are applicants proposed um, revisions to the conditions. Mr. Bossi, ready for takeoff. All right, good morning, Madam Chairwoman and members of the planning board. Uh, just for the record, Adam Bossi with the urban design section. Uh, this is the hearing for item five, the detailed site plan DSP 20029, which proposes the development of a food and beverage store and gas station. Uh, as we get started here, Madam Chair already mentioned, we did receive the two additional backup items as she discussed. Uh, and additionally, just for the record, I do wanna note that I was invited and did attend a January 20th meeting of the Beltsville Citizens Association, uh, where the applicant and residents uh, were able to talk about this case. So I do wanna thank them for inviting me uh, to, to participate in that discussion. I think it's great, uh, you know, seeing those things happen prior to, to the hearing. Um, so if we could move on to uh, slide two, then we'll get started. Uh, the subject property here is in planning area 61, council district one, slide three, please. Outlined in red, the subject site is located in the Southwest quadrant of the intersection of Howard Avenue and Baltimore Avenue in Beltsville. Slide four, please. As uh, shown here, the property is zoned commercial miscellaneous. That's the CM zone shown in this pink shade. Slide five, please. Uh, the subject site is part of the former Banky Nursery, which did operate at this location for, for many years. Uh, the subject area for this application includes the former retail building and some of the outdoor plant sale areas. The closest neighbor to the subject site is the Hostess Commercial Bakery. Uh, and retail operation, which is just north and across, uh, north of the site across Howard Avenue, excuse me. Uh, Baltimore Avenue does about the eastern side of the site with railroad tracks beyond, as we see here in the aerial image. Slide six, please. Uh, the topographic map shows the site is relatively flat. Slide seven, please. Again, Baltimore Avenue does about the east side of the site and it is shown here in red. It is classified as an arterial roadway. Slide eight, please. Uh, here with a bird's eye view, we do see the subject site in the top right corner of the image. And um, this slide does provide a, a fairly clear view of the existing condition here. Uh, again, with the existing retail building and other site features, uh, which are proposed to be raised by this DSP. Slide nine, please. Uh, just to slightly reorient you as we, we look at this, uh, most of the images that we've been looking at uh, north has been to the, to the top side of the image. This one we've turned uh, about 90 degrees clockwise, so north is, is to the right here, uh, just for orientation purposes. So the DSP does propose the development of a 4,500 square foot food and beverage store and a gas station with eight multi-product dispensers. Uh, the store is shown here on the west side of the site, again, the top of the image here with the gas station shown below it and Baltimore Avenue beyond at the bottom of the image. Uh, the next slide will actually show this, I think a little bit more clearly. Yes, so here, here we are with the landscape plan. And again, we do see that proposed building and gas station represented by the light gray square and rectangle respectively. Uh, access to our site is proposed at Howard Avenue on the top right corner of the image. And at the bottom left corner of the image, uh, there is a portion of an access road that is proposed to be provided with a right in right out turn to the southbound lanes of Baltimore Avenue. Uh, adequate parking has been provided uh, primarily around the convenience store building, uh, as well as sidewalks, bike racks, a trash enclosure, lighting and landscaping. All of these features have been provided uh, very generally in accordance with the associated requirements of the, the zoning ordinance and landscape manual. On uh, our review, staff did note a few details that require some technical corrections, and we did include some recommended conditions uh, for those in the staff report. Uh, at, uh, as was uh, brought up actually at the last hearing on Wawa, just to, to get ahead of the question now, uh, electric vehicle charging stations were not proposed with this application. Uh, so you will not see those on, on the detail site plan. Uh, if we can move on to slide 11, please. So in this and in, in the final uh, proceeding slides, we'll click, quickly look at the building elevations uh, and some of the signage that's been provided. 
Uh, here we see, again, the proposed building with an area of 4,500 square feet. It's rectangular in shape and a single story in height. The top image shows the front or the eastern facade of the store, which will uh, face inward to the site. And we see the western elevation or the rear of the building in the bottom image. Uh, the front of the building includes its main entrance with appropriate fenestration, and the rear includes service and delivery entrance. Uh, facades on all the sides of the building are to be clad with a combination of ephus and stone veneer and beige color tones. Uh, again, here we see the front facade of this building is, is primarily to be clad in stone veneer. If we can move on to the next slide, please. So this is showing the sides of the building. Uh, and the applicant has paid some nice attention to some of the details here, including spandrel glass, canopies, and, and stone veneer for a water table and some of these vertical elements. Uh, these are some nice touches that do add some interest to the sides of the building. Uh, the trash enclosure is also shown here, and, and you can see it will be clad with complementary materials and colors, so it does match the building. Slide 13, please. The gas station canopy will include, as I mentioned before, eight fuel dispensers and be approximately 152 feet long, 36 feet wide, and 19 and a half feet in height. The materials and colors selected for the structure, again, match those of the building and trash enclosure. Signage that's been provided by the DSP is pretty typical for the brand and the proposed use. Uh, as, outlined in as outlined in finding seven of the staff report, uh, staff recommended two directional signs that uh, did include some advertising be removed from the DSP. Uh, since the publication of the staff report, uh, we have uh, been in touch with the applicant who has proffered to remove uh, that advertising from those directional signs and essentially make them acceptable for retention. Uh, those uh, items as well as, um, are good. excuse me, the applicant has provided two exhibits seeking to address those items and issues now. Uh, the first exhibit, again, is that graphic showing uh, the existing directional signs and then their proffered revisions. The second document does provide uh, some language changes to finding seven in condition 1C of the staff report, which staff does agree with those uh, requested modifications. So in conclusion, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board, based on our review, staff does recommend that the Board approve DSP 20029, subject to the conditions included in the technical staff report, as modified by the applicant's exhibit. And those modifications are to finding seven in condition 1C. Uh, with that, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bossi. Let's see if the Board has any questions of you at this time. Madam Vice Chair. No, thank you. Thank you for the report. Okay. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Dorner. Yeah, just for historical context, um, I, I think, can we go to the map? Um, like one of the, I think the second slide or something. Yeah, so I, I think like maybe on the parcel above that, there used to be a 7-Eleven. Maybe it's been raised because it looked like in one of the other site, slides that, that the whole site is gone, but literally like a block down was a 7-Eleven before. Is, is that true or, or kind of what's happening there? Yeah, great question, Commissioner Dorner. Uh, I think it may be best for, for Mr. Gordon to address that. I believe there is a 7-Eleven located up the street, but I think he can provide some more context. Okay. So that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think it's like not even 50 okay. yards, maybe 20 yards away. So I, I just want to kind of find out what, yeah, where that CSC dark red kind of area is, I think. Is there okay. is 7-Eleven right there? So I'm just kind of want a little more context to, about that if we can. Okay. But, when we get right. to Mr. Gordon, when we get to Mr. Gordon, um, did you have any other questions of, of Mr. Bassi, Commissioner um, Dorner? No, no, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Geraldo. I have none. I'll just wait for uh, the applicant. Okay, and I'm sure the applicant was listening in the last case. Okay, Mr. Gordon, you ready? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. Uh, for the record, Matthew Gordon with the law firm of Selzer Gervich. Um, happy to be here today on behalf of the applicant, Route 1 LLC. Um, we are uh, grateful and in full support of the staff report recommendations as revised. Um, and we thank Mr. Bossi and the rest of your staff um, for providing us with 
uh, really great comments through this process, which resulted in a better overall site design. Um, I just wanted to touch on uh, a couple of the details, um, and I guess I'll, I'll take um, uh, Commissioner Geraldo's question from the last case. Um, pre today or Presently, um, 7-Eleven is not contemplating electric vehicle charging stations. Um, however, um, they would consider the infrastructure in the future, um, depending on market demand. Um, so they were going to maintain that flexibility to to monitor and see um, when it when it becomes a demand um, for this site, and and they would consider it at that time. Um, on the on the signage, I just wanted to touch on that briefly as well. Uh, the the commercial advertising components of the two directional signs at the entrances um, have been are proposed to be removed. Um, so that the signs can just function as wayfinding uh, to enhance vehicular circulation and traffic safety, um, which is consistent with other commercial uses um, in, in similar CM zoning, which has been permitted. Um, so that, that's that been proposed and um, we appreciate staff support for that, um, for those revisions. And then the one other point, um, I understand there were some questions um, from the community relative to Wacomico Avenue. Um, and it was it was vacated uh, by the planning board in, in the late 90s, I believe 1999. And there were a number of conditions that were required to be satisfied. Um, and we're just taking a step back. It's an east west. Uh, it was a former public street that bisected the property from east to west. Um, and recently it has been uh, the, the conditions were satisfied. And so it's no longer a public street. It's been consolidated into the property. Um, and it, it doesn't allow for any connectivity from from Route One into the neighborhood, um, to the, I believe to the to the west. Um, so that that was one of the questions that would ask. So it is is no longer a public street, and it's part of the property. Um, and I think those were those were the minor points that we wanted to touch on. And we appreciate your time and consideration. And uh, the full team is available for any other questions that arise. Okay. Um, a couple of things, because I know we we had Commissioner Drago's question, Commissioner Dorner's question, and I know you've addressed the citizens. Oh, I yeah, I apologize, okay. Commissioner Dorner. Um, that one, there, you're right. There is a a 7-Eleven uh, that is about a block away, and this is proposed to be the relocated 7-Eleven. Um, so that 7-Eleven will be closing, um, and and this is where they are moving it to just, just down the street. So you're, you're right that there is an existing one um, very close that will be closing in the future. Thank you. Um, I, I am now going to see if the board has any questions of you, Mr. Gordon. And after that, um, I know you have a, a, a large sign up list for um, if there are any questions, but I'd like to go to the people who sign up as opponents to, so that we can hear their concerns, which you may have already addressed. But if not, you can then address it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's see if the board has any questions. Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Dorner. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Geraldo. Just, uh, I, I, I didn't quite understand council's response. So, I take it you're not 7-Eleven is not adverse to a consideration in, in, in this plan, just a consideration for the uh, charging stations. Yeah, I think it's more going to be in the future that the consideration presently, they're not considering it, but in the future as necessary, they, they will. And, and what I think Commissioner Geraldo was asking is that um, similarly, if we, uh, as we did with the previous case, could, or are you amenable? to a consideration placed in the um, um, resolution that says you will will, will be um, open to that. We'll consider that as the need arises or as the trends continue. Yes, that, that would be acceptable. Okay, okay. Um, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so now I'm going to turn to um, the folks who have signed up in, a, in a, um, opposition. Ms. Kia? Kia is, is, I think it's Kia. You, you passed it. Hello. Um, uh, my main concern is the 
um, is the opening of Wacomico Avenue. Um, I'm hoping that that is not in the site plan and it, it kind of seems like it is not going to be. Um, I got some clarification from someone from your office yesterday, which I appreciated. Um, so as long as that is not a consideration, um, I can withdraw my opposition. Thank you. I think that's what um, Mr. Gordon was saying. I, um, so we'll let him respond again after that. And and, um, and then Cesario, did I pronounce it correctly, Kia? Same position, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, that's um, that's pretty close. It's pronounced Cesario. Um, thank you. There, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I have a similar concern, which I think is a way for the response. Um, however, I do have some opposition. Somebody's got, somebody has a TV or a telephone conversation going. So we're going to, we need to mute people. Okay. Um, Mr. Kia, you're, you're back on. Thank okay, you. thanks. Um, yeah, so I, I do have some opposition to a gas station um, being there. Uh, I, I believe that uh, there's already some some standing that, uh, uh, that the owner of the property is free to build whatever they wish. However, I didn't want to voice my opposition. I, being as how um, I am extremely close to that property um, and just didn't want to be by a gas station. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to turn to... Um, Mr. Gordon first to address um, the, the issue of the opening and then um, we can also address I mean, either our council, uh, Mr. Warner can address um, whether a uh, permitted use um, in, in the CM zone. Okay, uh, Mr. Gordon. Yes, thank you. Um, it, it will not, Wacomico Avenue will not be open to the general public in terms, there will be no sort of through movements um, that would connect to the neighborhood or the, the access from Route 1 from Baltimore Avenue just allows you to, to come into the property and get to the gas station, the future gas station uh, beverage store. So there there will be no, um, you're, you're correct that your concerns will, there will be no concern from, from uh, of what you raised. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Warner. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Hewlett, uh, David Warner, Principal Counsel. Um, yeah, this is a uh, uh, understandable uh, concern that people sometimes have when um, a use is changing on a parcel, especially one that they live very close to. Uh, the way that simply uh, the law works is the county uh, passes a zoning code that identifies what uses are permitted to be uh, undertaken on different pieces of property uh, around the county. On this piece of property, the zoning code allows the previous use as well as this proposed use. Um, and uh, so because it's allowed, we are now at the point of designing the property and approving the design for the property but we don't get involved in what the use of the property is gonna be that's already been decided. So that's not before us. And even if we didn't like the use, the planning board could not do anything about that at this stage. Thank you, Mr. Warner. So uh, um, it's been established by the council uh, as a legislative body that this is uh, permitted in that CM zone. And we can, as you indicated, we cannot thereby determine that this use is not permitted. It would be illegal on our part to do that. Um, um, but I would invite you, uh, Mr. Gordon, you and your um, uh, your clients and, and your team, you know, you can have future conversations and, uh, if there's any way, anything that you can put in place to be um, a little bit more protective about the, um, um, the, the surrounding neighborhood. So you can have continued conversations. Um, was there anything you else, anything else you care to add, Mr. Gordon? Uh, no, not at this time. But we, yeah, we will continue to communicate with the nearby community associations. Um, we've met with three different associations over the last several months, and so we're we're open and uh, willing to listen to anything from any of the neighbors. Okay, Mr. Bossy can share the contact information too for the kiosks. Okay, we won't do it over, you know, publicly, okay. but he can get it to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, does the board have any questions of anyone? 
Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff in addition to um, the amended finding as outlined in applicant exhibit number two. In addition to adding a consideration to explore adding charging stations for electrical vehicles and approve DSP-20029 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further modified by applicant exhibit number two. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Madam Vice Chair, uh, Vice Chair Bailey. But I. Commissioner Washington. I and happy birthday, Will. <laughs> Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner birthday boy. Thank you, and I'll vote I as well. <laughs> okay, and Commissioner Geraldo. Vote I. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so that's um, done. The ayes have it five zero. Um, I will, I'm looking at my agenda. That concludes what I have on my agenda before I turn to Mr. Hunt in honor of and to commemorate what would have been Rosa Parks' 113th birthday today. I close with her quote that you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it is right. Um, Mr. Hunt, the question for the day is, is there any additional business to come before this planning board? There are no additional business items before the planning board today, Madam Chair. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> okay, so before I hit this gavel, let me just say, um, everyone, please stay safe. Um, this is no joke out here. Please stay safe. Please look out for one another. Please reach out to maybe elderly or, or, or folks in your communities who may be lonesome or lonely. Um, also, uh, or who may be in need. Also, we have our Black History Month programs, as I said, um, there's a brochure online. And um, finally, very happy birthday to our beloved Commissioner Dorner. Planning board is adjourned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Bye-bye.